This morning's scripture is taken from Acts 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Here ends the reading of his holy word. I wanted to make sure I clarified that I'm not a mother because uh, I am in no way qualified to carry that mantle whatsoever. <laughs> so in our scripture today, we find the conclusion of Peter interacting with Cornelius and his household. And the scripture that we read today, in and of itself, that little blurb, uh, when it's lifted from the greater text, loses a lot of the importance of what was happening to the Gentiles and really what was happening in the world. Because you see, what's happening on that day is truly an important day in history. Now, did you get that from what we read today? Perhaps you did because maybe you know the greater story. Or perhaps you didn't. But you see, the Holy Spirit for the first time is being poured upon the Gentiles. And prior to this, it had been those that had once been considered Jewish. The world was changing and we thank the Lord that it did. And I say that we thank the Lord that it did because most of us, if not all of us here today, we would not be part of God's kingdom had it not changed. So let me explain just a little bit more about what had happened here. Prior to this scene, Cornelius, who is described as a God-fearing Gentile and also an officer in the Roman legion, had a vision from God, and he was told to invite Peter into his household. And around the same time, Peter had a vision that God put before him all the animals of the world, and God told him to kill whatever he wanted and to eat it. Peter, who was used to keeping the strict Jewish guidelines as to what he could and could not eat, refused lest he break the rules that God had set before him. Perhaps Peter thought he was being tested. But God responds to Peter's uh, refusal by saying, Do not call unclean what I have called clean. Now, this was not just about food. This was about people as well. See, God was telling Peter that it was time to include the Gentiles. It was time that the barriers that kept the two peoples apart were broken down and the message of Christ was to be given to them. Not just the message, but the Holy Spirit as well. See, no longer were the Israelites the only people that were chosen by God. Now all people were chosen by God. And both of the actions that these men undertake, they would have been seen as very strange. You see, both of these men were breaking traditions and long-held beliefs of their people and how a certain group should act towards one another. See, Peter was culturally Jewish, and Jewish people were not to go into the homes of non-Jews and have meals, lest they break those strict dietary guidelines. And they were not to become friends with the Gentiles, and they were especially not to have contact with the Romans. You see, Cornelius and the Romans were part of the oppressors of the Jews. They were the ones that had conquered Israel and much of the world during this time. And he was a part of that, uh, that group that the Israelites had tried to rebel against many times since the occupation of their lands. So Peter was risking the wrath of all the other followers of Christ 
and all the other Jewish people just by allowing himself to be seen with Cornelius. Now, Cornelius was breaking rules as well by allowing Peter to come into his home. See, he was allowing a man that was going around the area and spreading ideas that were contradictory to what the leaders in Rome wanted. Remember at this time, the people of Rome worshipped Caesar almost as if he was a god, and Caesar was above all. And so if Cornelius is allowing this man who is going through the, world, the land and saying, no, Christ is the Lord of all, into his home, he is risking not only his career as a soldier, but potentially his life as well. And I think it's important that we remember that ultimately it was the Romans that had Jesus crucified. So Cornelius is taking on a huge risk by allowing Peter to come to his home. But both of these men did things that were out of the ordinary, and they did it in order to follow the directions that they were given by God. You see, they were allowing the Holy Spirit room to do its work by following the visions that God had set before them. And as a result, we that are not ethnically part of the tribe of Israel, we should truly look at this day as one of the most important ones in history. When I consider the things that transpired on this day, I believe there are three main things that we can take away from them. The first is that we need to be willing to be obedient to do what God calls us to do. If these two men had chosen not to follow what God had said, not to go to Cornelius' home or not to invite Peter into his home, where would we be today? If they had caved into the pressure of the world around them and continued to follow those deeply ingrained ideals that Jews and Gentiles are not to mix with one another, where would we be today? So it is of the utmost importance for us that when we are called by God to do something, that we try our best to be obedient to his will. See, you never really know how God is going to use you to change this world. It might be something small, or it might be something like the Holy Spirit being spread to all the Gentiles. The second thing that I believe we should take away from this lesson of Peter and Cornelius is this. We are not to call unclean what God has called clean. Often we find ourselves feeling like Peter when we come across something or someone we believe is beyond saving. We take the standpoint of saying to God, I cannot be seen with this person. What will others think of me? They are so far gone, I will become unclean by being around them. And I've been taught my whole life that I'm to stay away from that type of person. Well, God does not care what we think of others. You see, God has called all to him. They are capable of being clean in his eyes, and they are all worthy of his grace. So we must allow ourselves to take the standpoint that we are to help them come to God. We can no longer afford to let ourselves believe that anyone is beyond saving, because God has called them clean, so we must not call them unclean. One of the things that I find the people who are not Christians almost always put up against people that are Christians is that they're hypocrites. That is almost always the first thing that you will hear, that they're hypocrites. And I know that it can feel very hurtful to hear those things, and that perhaps we can view it as a stereotype, right? But stereotypes have their roots in truths. And so if we were to overcome that, we must be willing to show them the love of God and show them that he wants to call them clean, regardless of what we may personally think of those people. The third lesson that we need to take away from our scripture today is that we are not to call unclean what God has called clean. Now you might be saying to yourself, Pastor, 
I think you must still be on vacation because that is the second point that you just made. However, this time, I'm talking about ourselves. You see, if we've accepted Jesus Christ into our heart, if we have asked for his forgiveness, then we are clean in the eyes of God. And as such, we must stop calling ourselves unclean. The mistakes that you have made are in the past. They are gone and they are washed away as far as God is concerned. And he is calling you clean now. And so should you. You can't continue to beat yourself up for the past. And if you've made amends and you have asked God to forgive you, it is time for you to leave those mistakes behind you. You are no longer able to call yourself unclean. And what a wonderful gift that has been given to all of us. On that day that Peter and Cornelius came together. So let us do our utmost to use that gift that God, of being called clean by God to further his kingdom. Often when I talk with people, they say things like, well, I'm saved, but I don't think I could ever make amends for the things I've done in the past. Well, here today, I'm telling you, if you are saved, then your past is gone. So look forward to the future of living that life that is clean in the eyes of God. Stop berating yourself for those mistakes of the past. So my challenges for you this week are these. Who have you been calling unclean in your life? Is it a person that you're thinking of? Is it a group of people that you're thinking of? Or is it yourself? Well, I want you to remember God has called you and them clean. And it's time to stop thinking of them or yourself as unclean. And my other challenge is this. Do you still need to get clean? Is today the day that Jesus is going to wash away your sins so that God can call you clean? And if you feel that way today, I pray that you don't wait one day longer so that you can be clean in the eyes of God as well. Amen.